Right. So uh, we're looking at we're looking ahead and we're looking at things that are coming up soon. And and things that are coming up soon include things like St. Patrick's Day and Easter and Tax Day. <sighs> yeah, Tax Day. It's good stuff. <laughs> With me, of course, is Jeff Matavish. Hi, Jeff. Hello. Going to talk a little bit about taxes today. Uh, tax Day is April 15th this year yes. uh, in 2024. Tax day can change slightly depending on whether or not you're hitting a weekend or a holiday or something like that. But mm-hmm. you said you looked it up. It is it is, uh, it is actually it is April fifteenth this year, right? It is. Yep. We thought we we thought we'd sit down and talk a little bit about taxes. What what you and and just we're going to do a a general overview of just things you might need to do your taxes, things you want to have on hand, where you might go, how you might go about it. Just like any other thing that we do on the show, we are not endorsing any one particular service or software or anything because we briefly discussed the idea of trying to modify some of these names <laughs> to avoid and it. We're going to confuse ourselves. Yeah, and we're going to confuse ourselves and we're going to confuse you. So we're going to throw some names out there, but please understand we're not endorsing any one of these. We're just giving you options yeah. and telling you what's out there and, and things like that. So so let me ask you, let's start with, do you do your own taxes or do you use like a tax preparer or do you use software? How do you do your taxes? Yeah, I, I don't do my own taxes. I, I pay somebody for that. Okay. I, I used to use a, um, an accountant. Now I'm, I think I'm going to go to, um, you know, one of these just brick and mortar places that only do taxes. You know? Gotcha. So like one of the ones that have like the little curtained kiosk, like in, in like the, in like Walmart or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I always see those and I think to myself, like, I don't know that I would want to just sit there behind a shower curtain in Walmart and have somebody do my taxes. No. For me. But I don't know. I guess it works, yeah, I, I guess. you know, or they wouldn't keep doing it. This, I mean, this, and this is also the first time I'm filing jointly. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I had congratulations. My, yeah. Thank you. I had my own accountant. She had her own accountant and we're kind of hitting a neutral territory of yeah. let's go somewhere else. You know? Yeah. What about so, you? Do you do you do your own taxes or do you have? Well, someone I do, do them. I mean, I do my own taxes, but I don't do my own taxes like I use okay. a tax or software. Oh, OK. Right. So. So, I mean, there's different ones out there. There's, I mean, again, we're going to drop a few names. There's, there's TurboTax, there's Quicken, there's Free Tax USA online. There's, I think you can even do it through irs.gov, mm-hmm. but. That's a little more involved though. Yeah. I think you're actually like, you have to pick the right form and fill everything mm-hmm. out and, you know, but it doesn't cost anything then, I guess. I don't think you have to, I don't think it would cost you anything for to no, file. But I, I, I wouldn't want that stress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I would either. I kind of like the idea of the software sort of walking you through yeah. it. And there's different ones. I think even the H&R Block people have, I think they started advertising a software now too. Yeah, they have three different ways you can do it. You can either use their software, upload your files directly to them. You can have a quick 15-minute talk with them and hand your files off. Or you can have a one-on-one and, and sit there while they, they do your taxes for you. So yeah. Yeah, they're pretty flexible. I saw the uh, there was a commercial on TV. I think for I think I think it was for TurboTax, and it, the whole the whole concept was you know that they have tax preparers, right? They can they can help you through some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And they had a person mountain climbing, and they're like, look, they're doing their taxes, you know. And then <laughs> they had a person like water skiing. They're like, oh, look, they're doing their taxes. The funny thing was, if you read the fine print at the bottom, it actually says you must be present with your preparer. <laughs> <laughs> In order for them to do your taxes. So while technically you're not doing your taxes, you still kind of have to be there. You can't be water skiing and then like, you know, unless they're, unless the tax preparer is with you on the water well, skis. No, they're just saying, you know, you, we'll speed this process up so you can go water skiing, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought that. But yeah, no. So I do, the, I do that. I, in fact, I did do my taxes over the weekend and uh, they kept prompting me throughout do you sure you don't want a, a professional tax preparer to look at this and, and that sort of thing? But I, I just kept saying, no, I'm, I'm good, yeah. you know. Uh, and the software has done, you know, well for me over mm-hmm. the years, you know. But, but I totally get where you're coming from, too, having a professional do it because you want to make sure you get that stuff done right. Yeah. So. I, I have no headache then, yeah. Yeah. So what do you do? You just collect all of your all documentation my documents. Yep. and yep. provide that to them? Yep, W-2s and, and any 1099s. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so a couple of, so let's, let's talk a little bit about that. So what kind of stuff do you need to have to kind of do your taxes? I mean, you're going to have to have your, your personal information, right? You're mm-hmm. going to have to provide your social security number. You're going to have to provide a, like a, most likely like you can actually, a lot of these softwares anywhere will import like your W-2s and things like that from your employer if you provide the employer's information. Mm-hmm. So you can do that. That helps avoid some miskeying of numbers and things like that because good, they yeah. kind of import it for you. Yeah. 
But some of the other documents you want to have handy, if and we're talking, and before we go too far into this, we should say we're we're talking how we would imagine most people would be doing their taxes, which is that you work for someone mm-hmm. else. Uh, if you're a self-employed person, you're probably paying your taxes a little bit differently. Even though you have to file a tax return, you're probably paying your taxes quarterly or something along those lines. Right. If you're retired, if you're, you know, I mean, there are exceptions to this, but we're talking about the the, the general schmoes like us that work for a company. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now, and what you probably want to have. So, uh, so a W two from your employer. Right. Uh, 1099 form for any uh, contract work you might have completed or. Uh, interest you might have earned on like a contest or a sweepstakes or some sort of something like that. Mm -hmm. Interest you may have earned from a CD or a time deposit, an IRA, uh, that sort of thing. You want to make sure that you have handy any income that you may have gotten from unemployment or social security benefits, income from previous year's state and local tax returns, which I don't know what that would exactly be. I, I, they always ask me that every year. Do you want to apply your return to your next year's taxes? And I'm always like, no. Why not? <laughs> Give me the money now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if the like if you own rental properties, right? And then things like you know, uh, I guess it depends on whether you're doing itemized or I, itemized deductions or not. But there, if you're doing itemized deductions, things like you know, charitable donations, moving expenses, job search expenses, insurance claims from federally declared disasters. So there, I mean, there's all kinds of different paperwork out there, but, but I would, I would probably assume that most people are going to have, what did you say? Oh, 1098. Yeah. 1098. So yeah, if you're going to school, if you have yeah. student loans or, you know, you, you paid tuition, I mean, that goes towards your taxes too. So yeah, tuition or else even if you're out of school and you're paying your loans off, the right. interest that you have paid uh, on your student loans, you know, mm-hmm. you can, you can put that on there as a deduction. So things like that, that you want to have, that you want to have handy. Some other things that may apply to some people, things like contributions to medical savings accounts, IRA contributions are a big deal. Mm -hmm. And you can usually contribute to an IRA. They usually tell you when you can stop contributing to last year's IRA. It's usually after the first of the calendar year. So you may still, depending on, depending on when you're listening to this, you may or may not still be able to contribute to last year's IRA. (laughs) Interest from investment stocks or other properties, costs related to child care education, which we just talked about, home ownership, so mortgage interest, property taxes, energy saving improvements. But the thing of it is, you have to have a lot of itemized deductions to get past what uh, the the standard deduction is, Mm -hmm. right? So if you're only doing maybe your property tax and two other things, chances are you're still going to be told that the the standard deduction is is bigger than what what you can write off. But I mean, just things to keep in mind. So yeah, so and and so after going through that laundry list of stuff, I can understand again why you might want to just have somebody else do this for you. And, and a good thing to do too is, you know, if you're trying to figure out what documents you need, look at your last year's return. You know, maybe you have oh, good point. Maybe you have, you know, at least I I keep all of my my returns and I, I know what I gave my tax prepper the year before, so I kind of match those documents up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and when it comes to those documents too, the 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 bank or the mortgage pr- provider or the student loan servicer, they're all responsible for getting you those forms. Mm-hmm. So if you are owed a 1099, uh, a 1098, or any of those other kinds of things, if you have investments, if you have a, you know, a 1099 div or INT or something, mm-hmm. the, the, your, your, the organization that you're through, they have to give you that stuff. So make sure that you're, if, you're, if you're missing your W-2, talk to your employer. Yeah. If you're missing your 1099 or whatever it is, make sure you're talking to whoever was supposed to give it to you because you can't just generate those. Yeah, yeah. So make sure you have those. So let's talk a little bit about refund versus payment. Okay. <laughs> so have you ever had to, have you ever owed on your taxes? I know I, that's a personal question, but I'm just curious. You know what? Not that, not that I can think of. Yeah. I, I can't remember any, any, any year that I had to, to pay anything back. Yeah. Yeah. How about I, you? Uh, no. I can't think of any time I had to, owe, I had to owe. but the, so when you get, when, again, we're talking about being employed, when you get hired, your human resources person, manager, whoever is probably going to have you fill out a W-4 and the W-4, you tell them how much you want to have deducted, you know, in, in, on your taxes. And if you put down like a zero, mm-hmm. they're going to take out the most they possibly can for your federal and t- state taxes with the idea being that hopefully you, you won't owe anything. Yeah. Right. Uh, you put down a one or a two you're going to have less taxes taken out, but you got to be careful. You, you want to make sure that you don't 
put that number up too high because you're going to get more in your paycheck, but then you may owe at the end of the year right. on taxes. So you got to find that happy medium. Do you want to run yourself short now or? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the ultimate goal would be to be at zero. Right. Right. Because right. you don't want to loan the government money with without interest, but at the same time, you don't want to owe the government money either. Yeah. So ideally, you'd want to be at zero whenever your uh, taxes uh, come around. But a lot of us like getting that little windfall. Yeah, the end, exactly. You know, and I'd rather be safe than sorry personally. Yeah, me too. I don't want a big surprise at the end saying, "Hey, you owe you know, a large chunk of yeah. change." Yeah. So how do you get your? So how do you normally get yours back? Do you get a check? Do you get direct? I used deposit? to get a check. Yeah, but at starting a probably oh I don't know a few years back, it was direct deposit. Yeah. Yeah, I think I mean most most of the what they say is you know if you if you're trying to get your your. Um, your money back relatively quickly. Mm-hmm. Direct deposit is the way to go. I think they will still cut you a check, but I, you're going to wait a lot longer. I would have to think. Okay, I didn't um, even have that option. It was, I mean, my accountant said, "Hey, I just I need a an account number and a routing number." So yeah, and that's a good point. You want to make sure you're giving you're the not right mixing numbers, those twos yeah. up. Or if you're if you're putting in a, a routing number and account number, make sure it's the right one so that your deposit doesn't get deposited yeah. into the wrong account. And those are found at the bottom of your checks. Yes, they are at the bottom of your checks. So yeah. your routing number and your account number would be at the bottom of your check. That is true. You can usually reach out to your bank too. They'll they'll tell you what their routing number is and your account number. Normally, it's on your statement too. I yeah. think it's, I think it's in the clear on your statement if you if you look at the, they'll have the whole because a lot of times your account number is like it'll be like star 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 and then like maybe the last four digits. Mm-hmm. But I think if you actually look at your statement, it'll okay. show the full yeah. account number. So make sure you're giving that that correct information uh, before that. I was reading too, the, the IRS is preparing for more than 146 million individual tax returns this season. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot. So I guess the sooner you do it, maybe the faster you'll get, because everybody's going to wait till the 15th of April and then you're yeah. going to wait longer. But that's a lot. That's a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, for the, I, I don't know. I, I don't know anybody who works for the IRS. I never have. I don't either. I don't envy them. No, because I, all... I would I would hope that a lot of that's automated now. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, when you tell us, I mean, that's got to be a downer at parties. Oh, what do you do? I work for the IRS. Yeah. <laughs> I, wouldn't wanna, I feel bad. I mean, if you're if you work for the IRS, I mean, I maybe I'm wrong, but that, that just feels like that's something that most people would be like, oh, hey, wow, like I got to go refill my drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, best way to get your refund fast probably to do direct deposit. Uh-huh. I was presented with an option whenever I did mine over the weekend where if I wanted my refund faster, they were offering me a 0% interest loan with no fees supposedly that they would give me they would basically give me my tax return and then when I got my tax return I was supposed to pay off the loan. But okay. that just feels like more work cuz th- I was reading the average says that if you're doing direct deposit, the IRS says that you should expect your refund within about 21 days from the day your your return is accepted. Okay. So, I mean. I guess if you're hurting for money, uh, you, you maybe, but uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I'd trust that either. I don't know. I just feel like I would try to wait the 21 days. Yeah. And not have to worry about the extra rigmarole of, of another loan. Because that, the, I, I don't know this, but I would have to think that that loan is then going to ping your credit report and all that kind of stuff too. Because you're taking oh, out a loan. Yeah. So that's something to think about. If you don't want somebody hitting your credit report for a loan that that you're like a, a temporary, like not even three weeks, basically mm-hmm. loan. I don't know how that would go. Yeah, but well, and then you had mentioned before we had started, you know, this conversation that you used to get be able to get what prepaid uh, cards yeah. for a tax return. Yeah, I think they did that for a while, and I don't know if they still do, but if they do. There's fees associated with those kinds of things too. Okay. Prepaid cards are very convenient for people who may not have a bank account mm-hmm. per se, but the disadvantage to those is that unless you're going to a store and swiping that card like you would a debit card or a credit card, uh-huh. there's probably fees. So you can't take it to an ATM and get your money off of that without paying a fee. Okay. You can't, you know, use it sometimes online without a fee. You can't. You know, so I, I would steer away from prepaid cards if you, if you can. Mm-hmm. This is also a really great time if you don't have a checking account or bank account to talk to a bank that you trust that maybe your family uses or friends use, you know, see if you can open up a bank account because it would be a lot faster to have that stuff direct deposit and then you're, you know, right. you got that advantage. But right. And even cashing the check sometimes is hard if you don't have a bank. Yeah. A lot of, you lot know. Of, a lot of places won't do that. Yeah. At all. So, yeah. So my taxes are done. Yours aren't. No. So you get to see... <laughs> No. There, I have everything lined up. I'm, I'm I'm all ready for it. 
Yeah. That's good. So you I got all of your documents that I just all rattled my off a little bit again. In the line. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Got my wife's documents. Got my documents. I just got to make that call. That's awesome. All right. Well, happy tax day. Uh, yeah, you too. All right. We'll talk to you later. All right. Sounds all right. good. This podcast focuses on having valuable conversations on various topics related to banking and financial health. The podcast is grounded in having open conversations with professionals and experts with the goal of helping to take some of the mystery out of financial and related topics, as learning about financial products and services can help you make more informed financial decisions. Please keep in mind that the information contained within this podcast and any resources available for download from our website or other resources relating to bank chats is not intended and should not be understood or interpreted to be financial advice. The host, guests, and production staff of Bank Chats expressly recommend that you seek advice from a trusted financial professional before making financial decisions. The host of Bank Chats is not an attorney, accountant, or financial advisor, and the program is simply intended as one source of information. The podcast is not a substitute for a financial professional who is aware of the facts and circumstances of your individual situation. Amerisur Presents Bank Chats is produced and distributed by Amerisur Financial Incorporated. Thank you for listening. Please check out our full library of episodes, which can be found on the Amerisurf.com website. You can also download or stream the podcast from your favorite podcast app. 